My girlfriend and close friend betrayed me so I gave them a surprise. Part 2. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. One from my clearly panicked mom, who had found the back door smashed open and had called the police, one from Catherine in tears, and one from the local police asking me to call. After returning all the calls, I informed the police I was away on business, and that I would be back the following week to talk with them. While away, I got Catherine to stay with my parents until after I got back, and asked my dad to organize one of the local security companies to install cameras and an alarm system after getting the go-ahead from the police so as to not ruin the scene of the crime. After getting home, I did the usual my god I can't believe this has happened and why would anyone do this? Routine. After doing a thorough check of everywhere, finding that the items I had taken were missing and filing a police report, I had the security company's rep talk Catherine and I through how the cameras and alarm system worked. Then came the question I had been waiting for. The question of what happens if we are doing some business and don't want it recorded. She acted a bit shy asking this question. But I knew exactly the reason she was asking. He assured us that this was a question he got asked a lot, and we were shown on the home computer, if we wanted to be doing things without it being recorded, how to stop the recording for certain cameras, so that we could protect her modesty. As I was walking him out, I asked him if cameras were turned off, could a notification be sent out, just as a security precaution. He came back in and helped me through how to set up email notifications and left shortly after. Fantastic. All I had to do was wait. At this stage, I approached our slash legal advice for some help in relation to couples law in my country. I needed to make sure that my upcoming plan could legally be done and that I would not be forced to pay out any money or equity to Catherine as I didn't know if we were classified as a de facto couple or not. Being the sole benefactor of Rachel's estate, I didn't want to be left with any nasty surprises where Catherine could take any of the estate away from me. Shout out to those guys and gals there as they helped me get in contact with a great lawyer who assured me, due to the fact that although we had been dating for close to four years, we had not been living together long enough to be classified as de facto, and because I was paying all the utilities on the property that she was living in and didn't pay rent, showed that she had no legal standing to make a financial claim against me. Just to be sure though, he drew up what I felt was a pretty ironclad document just in case there was any legal trouble. The following week, my work had approached me, and offered me a promotion to move back to the city and run the team that I was a part of, meaning I wouldn't need to travel as often and be in the one location and due to the success of being located in my hometown, that they were considering having three to five representatives spend one to two weeks in the larger surrounding towns including my hometown as a part of my team. I said yes, and began the process of beginning my transfer, which would take about six weeks. Perfect. More than enough time to gather all my evidence. Upon getting back to my hometown the following week, I began to start in motion the rest of my plan. I asked Harry to approve one week's worth of vacation for Catherine for two weeks' time. I wanted to send her and a friend or two away on a retreat before I made the biggest decision of my life for a second time. He jumped up and gave me a huge hug, congratulating me on being prepared to take the leap again. I hugged him back tight, but not the way I think he imagined it at the time. He agreed and blocked out the week for me. I asked him not to say anything to anyone, as I wanted to make it as big a surprise as I could. I knew that it would spread like wildfire around the office regardless, but that was my plan. That night, I told Catherine that I had booked her and two friends to go to a tropical spa resort, all expenses paid for a week. No questions asked, pick two friends, and come back to the biggest surprise of her life. She screamed like a kid who had just been told that all the candy in the shop was hers to have. I then told her that the following week, I was going to spend it in the city, preparing for a large client who was one of my biggest accounts, and needed some people in my team to help before flying out the following week and I wouldn't be home until the Monday that she was leaving, so I wouldn't be able to see her, which seemed to disappoint her, but I told her it would be worth it when she returned. What I failed to tell her, was that I had decided to take two weeks vacation on the other side of the country, mentally preparing myself for the shitstorm that was about to erupt the moment she stepped foot on the plane as well as enjoying my first stage of freedom. On Sunday two weeks later, I flew back and began driving home. Once getting there I did a quick pass by my house and sure enough, Harry's car was there. Like the first night I had caught them, I parked a little ways back, and checked the cameras. Asleep in my bed. No surprise honestly as I had recorded them constantly do this over the two weeks I had been away. I then made my first call to the police blocking my caller ID. 
I told them that I was one of my neighbors and saw someone hanging around in their car in the alley behind my house and occasionally passing something through windows to passing cars, while also looking into my yard and I was concerned that they were dealing drugs and are going to break into someone's property. I gave them his license plate and description. They said they would have someone there in a few minutes so I thanked them and hung up. I then called Catherine and told her I was about 10 minutes from home, and that I knew she was flying out tomorrow, but desperately wanted to surprise her. Looking back at the footage now, I laugh at the commotion that I am surprised I didn't hear. In a few short seconds, Harry was half-dressed and flying out the back door to his car. At that point, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect scene. As Harry was peeling away, one of the police cars rounded the corner behind me, saw Harry driving away fast, and gave chase. After pulling in, greeting an excited Catherine, and doing all the couple things, she fell asleep again. I, on the other hand, couldn't sleep a wink. The next day, her and her friends were bundled into a car. After they drove away, I had to wait a few hours, but I began to execute my plan. I called my friend who was a removalist, and apologized for the late notice but needed my place packed and moved on Friday. After agreeing on a time I told him that he would need to take certain boxes to a storage facility, which he said wasn't an issue. Then I began packing Catherine's belongings. Later that day, I got a call from the police for me to come and identify some property that they had apprehended from a suspect the previous night that fit the description of property I had reported stolen. I grinned to myself, happy that my plan for Harry had grown to fruition and replied that I would be there shortly to collect it. Of course, when I got there, some of the items were still unaccounted for, due to the fact that they must have still been in his house and then they hadn't searched there yet. By this stage, the town was buzzing with news. Events in my hometown don't stay secret for long. Harry was disgraced and promptly fired for his possession of drugs and stolen property, and our respective bosses on behalf of the company had extended a formal apology towards me during the week. That night I went to my parents' house and told both mine and Rachel's parents what had happened, omitting certain details, and that I was moving back to the city after being promoted, but Catherine wouldn't be a part of it. They were pretty upset initially that I hadn't let them know what was going on, but were happy that I was handling everything maturely and hadn't sunk to their level, though they didn't agree with ghosting Catherine. But after some drinks, laughs and tears, I went home. On Friday afternoon, after a busy week of organizing cleaners for the following week, the real estate to put my house on the rental market, and various other tasks at my hometown's office, I packed some things into my car, and drove to my parents' place and said goodbye before the drive. Before leaving, I went to Becky's house. Becky had been one of Rachel's closest friends growing up. She was the only other person who knew what was happening minus the details about Harry. Without her help, I wouldn't have been able to organize everything as quickly as I had. I gave Becky a large manila folder with my gathered evidence of her cheating, as well as the letter and a few other legal documents from my attorney stating that she was ordered not to contact me, and the details of how to access her belongings located at the storage unit I had rented out. After a quick goodbye, I left and drove back to the city. There are more to come. Find out the update of this story, check our channel or the description. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.